Uh, the saturation of online social media, such as Facebook, Twitter and YouTube, are now giving us insight into racist behaviour, which would have previously remained hidden from public view. There is an alarming growth of racist Facebook groups titled F off, we're full and the like, and a growing number of YouTube videos now show people caught on camera racially abusing others. Do you think social media exacerbates racism or can we use it as a tool to assist in defeating it? Rachel, what do you think? I, mean, I think it goes back to the most common question that's asked around social media, which is, is it a tool for good or for evil? You have to sort of, if you think of what social media does, it gives us access to information, it gives us access to conversations, but it's also going to change the types of conversations that are out there. So for every good conversation, there's going to be a dark side. I, I personally believe that the debate is a good one to have. And that I, I, I think Jeremy was incredibly brave how public he was around social media. So I think it's, you can't say let's control social media because you're actually trying to fight against the DNA of what social media is about. It's, it's an open system that's designed to go viral. So trying to put it back in the box is, is kind of an obsolete conversation to have. Corinne, what do you think? Um, I, I mean, if you're going to try and put certain things in a box um, that means you can't insult people, you can't humiliate them. Can you do that on social media or not? What well, do you think? the UK has tried to do that mm. a bit and it's not working out so well for no. them. It's, it's, it, but, I mean, but that's a separate... That's under the Communications Act, I think, that they're doing that, not under the Discrimination Act. Um, I, I think that... I'm not sure that Facebook and Twitter is changing the level of racism. I think it's... I don't think that if you're a person who's not particularly racist, that somehow Facebook has turned you into a racist. Um, at least I hope not. Um, but I think it's found a place for those people to, to meet and form a group. But at the same time, like Rachel said, it, it's found a way for those who are, are more liberal in their way of thinking to, to form groups as well. I think what needs to happen for, for any kind of educative process to happen is for the, the people who believe that racism is, is wrong, such as myself, need to take the heat out of their arguments, need to not abuse people back. They need to find ways of being more educative in the process and to, to, to come to it with a good heart and try and find a way to communicate with these people effectively. Well, here from the other non-politician first. Uh, James, what do you Yeah, think? Tony, I think we need to be extremely cautious when we're talking about regulation or uh, legislation in this area. We've seen elsewhere in the world, particularly in the United Kingdom, 17-year-olds uh, being jailed for sending a silly tweet, which they regret. Um, we don't want to see young people making a silly mistake online and, and paying for it with, with serious jail time. And that's the kind of thing that these laws lead to. Uh, police agents, uh, police are, are completely diverted to, to chasing up silly online disputes and, and that's not something I think we want to see in a free country like Australia. Chris Evans. Well, I think the reality is that even if you wanted to, controlling social media is probably beyond regulation in many ways, or certainly beyond uh, very effective regulation. But uh, just but just put this put it this way: uh, if your laws, um, you know, writ broadly as they are, the Anti-Discrimination Act um, comes into effect, could it actually uh, impinge on people's freedom to say things on social media? Could you find the same thing that's happening in the United Kingdom? Young people, uh, stupid young people. Um, getting arrested for doing, you know, saying stupid things. Well, well, I think it's more about whether or not people are trying to incite something like racial hatred rather than saying stupid things. Uh, but I think the reality is all governments are, are struggling to come to terms with social media and what it means more broadly for our society. But I don't think us uh, trying to sort of intervene heavily is the answer. It is about people sharing their views. And I think Corinne's point is the key one. You actually want to try and help people develop... Uh, more positive views rather than think that somehow by clamping down on their use of social media one's able to to somehow solve the problem. I, I think the reality is governments are struggling to keep up with the rate of technological change and the way the world world's moving and uh, I'm not sure they're easy answers. To be honest I don't think our politicians are trying hard enough. I mean there was a study that was released last year that showed that um, a third of all our government leaders are social media virgins. They have no social media accounts whatsoever. A third are... You're de de deliberately trying to embarrass me here, aren't no. you? <laughs> I won't embarrass you. Um, I know you have a Twitter account. I don't think that's you tweeting, by the way. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> which is... Absolutely, is it just... absolutely not. <laughs> is it just full of YouTube videos of cats? Is no, it's, right? it's pretty boring. I could give you some advice, actually. <laughs> I am 
very glad to hear that. <laughs> yes, um, follow the mayor of Newark. He's pretty good, actually. Uh -huh. But anyway, um, Cory Booker. Um, the interesting thing, so a third are completely inactive. A third are like you, um, where they have an account because I'm sure some young person said this is what you should do. And then a third the are... The other third are Malcolm Turnbull and Kevin Exactly. Yeah. And then, <laughs> who actually have more combined than the whole political party, which yeah. is very interesting. So do we really trust these people who don't innately use these tools to be our internet policemen? They shouldn't be our digital guardians. They shouldn't be setting well, regulations around... Why should we around... have policemen and guardians, though? I mean, I think that's, that, that's the problem. And if I can... Tony, return to the question that was asked of us. I don't think it is... I don't think that to throw a spotlight on a problem is to exacerbate the problem. You asked, sir, whether, um, whether uh, social media make the problem of racism worse. Yeah. I, no, I don't think so, because it, when you throw a spotlight on unattractive or unacceptable conduct that most people would, 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 would find shocking, then more people will come to learn of that and the, the, the capacity of society spontaneously to join together and say, well, you know, that's not the way we Australians behave, I think will be enhanced. And that's a much better way of exposing obnoxious opinions than by heavy-handed government regulation or legislation.